Futurism, the belief in a future fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel. Well, Tom, if, the whole study of if this no book one believed is, in futurism to, and still believed it, if no one believed in futurism and everybody still believed in historicism the way the saints have always believed, the papacy would still be a prisoner in the Vatican. Right. We wouldn't have 1929 signing of the Lateran Treaty yet. Who let the dragon out of the bottomless pit? Protestants! Mm -hmm. Who let the son of perdition out of the bottomless pit? Futurists. Who once were historicists, Bible believing Christians, and knew who the Antichrist was, and knew how he was deceiving the whole world, and how he was conquering the world for himself to force every man, woman, and child on the planet to worship him, not Christ. Now, do you see why they need a future fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week? There has to be a formal declaration at some point in history that the Pope is Christ's vicar on earth and we ought to all bow down and worship him just like the priests of Rome do, just like all Roman Catholics do. None of it would be possible without futurism. Preterism too, but there, in, manner, in comparison, few believe in preterism anymore. Futurism now is the, the, the name of the game. You can't walk in the door of any church and not hear the futurist interpretation of Bible prophecy, the future 70th week of Daniel, a future temple, future animal sacrifices, a future peace treaty with the Jews. You, it's all a lie. Every bit of it, everywhere you go, it's 24-7, 365. It's on every channel. You can't tune it out. It's everywhere you look. It's everywhere you walk. It's everywhere you talk. It's in everything you read and everything you see. And the truth is rejected as heresy. The ancient truth of the saints of Almighty God is rejected nowadays universally by Christians to be heresy. We're a threat to their rapture. We're a threat to their future 70th week of Daniel. We're a threat to their very salvation. 
Now you know why General Donald J. Trump says he's going to fight for the Roman Catholic Church. He believes in that future Christ. He believes in that papal Christ. It's a stunning state of affairs. You can't, words can't even describe. The heart can't comprehend it all at once. The horrors that have beset the body of Christ. It's, it's, it's equivalent to the Jews finally rejecting Jesus. What a horror. We've all read in our Bibles how the Jews sought to kill him. And the Jews who said, we have no king but Caesar. Do you realize now the Protestants say we have no king but Caesar? It's deja vu all over again. The Protestants of today know no more about their, their coming visitation than did the Jews who rejected Jesus 2,000 years ago. It's that bad. That's not an exaggeration. That's literal facts on the ground. It's visible, undeniable. They are just as blind and stiff-necked as were the Jews who stoned Jesus, who crucified Jesus. I, I think people think uh, that I raise my voice and say these outrageous things just to entertain myself. Do you realize I'd rather be doing anything than what I'm doing right now? I'd rather be doing anything than what God has saddled me with to do. Because what I'm doing puts me at odds with all of Christendom. It makes me a mortal enemy of all of Christendom. It makes me a mortal enemy of my local government, my county government, my state government, my federal government, and the world government. It makes me a mortal enemy of the whole stinking world. Even to your own family. Even to my own family. But proceed I must. And if I ever grow weary of it, God's going to take me home. This isn't about me. This is about this book. And when I'm gone, God will just raise up another voice. Maybe more easy to listen to than mine. Maybe not as emotional as mine. But another voice indeed. The truth will not be silenced in this world. So long as the sun shines in the sky, the moon shines at night, and the world exists God's truth will never be taken out of this world. And though they endeavor to silence every historicist, every true Protestant on the face of the earth, God will raise up stones to give him glory. We must start at the foot of the cross. For our souls in danger, we're at loss. And when we kneel in that awesome place, at that very moment, you'll feel God's grace. Friend, let me tell you, you need to know, there is heaven, also hell below. Christ died on that cross to set you free from your vile sins and hell's agony. You're God's enemy without the cross. Reject Christ and to God your dross. Prison of hell he will send, just Christ's work on the cross makes amends. God hates those who try to enter in, the gates of heaven still full of sin. Only his son can take sin away, 
go to the foot of the cross this day. God has provided only one way to enter heaven's wondrous array. Except what Jesus did for us all, he paid our debt so hell won't befall. Go to the foot of the cross this day, his precious blood washes sin away. We each need to think more of his cross without our Savior with total loss.